I ordered a Pine phone, which to many of you in love with your Android and iOS phones can't possibly exist. It's a phone that's made for GNU Linux. It's a phone with privacy by default. And I'm getting it soon, ahead of the pre-ordered Librem 5. So this is very exciting. This is an early release and I'll tell you exactly what you can and cannot do with this phone. And you'll find out about what the challenges are in Linux Mobile next. There are two phones being advertised as made for GNU Linux. And these are the Librem 5 and the Pine phone. And both of these are 2019 phones. Before this, the only option was to convert some limited Android phone models to using Linux. I already ordered Librem 5 this past summer and apparently I will not get it until April at the earliest. Maybe it'll take a year to get it. Not surprisingly, this has caused tension with the backers of the Librem 5 because it wasn't clear what the delay was about. Then while that was being hashed out in social media, we got a positive surprise coming from a competitor. The Pine phone became available this past November 15, and I jumped on it, listed at $150, and I should receive it in December. I'm excited, and I'll tell you what I can do and cannot do with this. All early stage stuff. The list price of $150 does not cover shipping and tax in California, so I ended up with a total price of about $180. And they say duties are not included, so there's a possibility of more charges. In any case, this Pine phone from Pine64 is a pre-release edition called Braveheart. Because you have to be brave to get the phone. At least that's what they say. This phone is hardware only hardware only and at the moment there's no os that has a complete working solution for the pine phone it clearly states on their website that if you expect a consumer level device then you shouldn't buy this and i'm talking only about software the hardware is already a consumer level device when they ship the final consumer model it will be loaded with an actual os and due to the expected shutdown of the phone industry in China during the Chinese New Year, the production will resume in March for the consumer models. Just in contrast to the purism people that makes the Librem 5, purism has people actively programming to make sure that driver support for the Librem 5 is part of what is called mainline Linux. This means making sure that future releases of Linux distros include the Librem 5 drivers. And they're actively working on the pure OS distro for the Librem 5. So the Librem 5 is intended to be more of a total solution. No such work has occurred on the Pine64, though somehow many parts of it has been figured out by the community because of the demand. The Pine64 company does not have any programmers, so they're relying solely on the community to provide a Linux OS for this device. It's an interesting strategy and in a way reminiscent of the community that has been built from the Raspberry Pi. This is not a new concept to the Pine64 company since they make the Pine64 single board computer or SPC that in fact competes with the Raspberry Pi. Their SBCs are much better than the Raspberry Pi in performance, though not as much compatibility. I personally not used the Pine64 board since it's a little larger than what I want, but I've seen the many benchmarks that show it being multiple times faster than the Raspberry Pi. In any case, Pine64 already had the computer. They didn't have to start from scratch. So they created a phone version of it. Added the usual display, the touch screen, the GPS, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and baseband. And made their own motherboard. And surprisingly, they're able to ship it in volume ahead of Purism. In fact, I'm going to guess that they have already manufactured much more than Purism as of today. Very impressive. And if you see some of the pictures here, it looks good. Looks like a typical Android phone. There's even a prototype building video 
where you can see how it is built. I'll link that video in the description. I was wondering exactly what phone parts they were using on it that created easy compatibility with Linux. So I checked the Wi-Fi, for example, and found that the Wi-Fi chip was in fact already supported in Linux. There's an existing driver for it. Same with the Bluetooth. So this will eliminate many of the headaches with current Android conversions to Linux. I'm using an Ubuntu Touch on a Nexus 5 and the lack of good Bluetooth for cell phone is an inconvenience. This may be the type of device that will solve that. In a way, Pine64 didn't have the challenges of purism because they didn't set out to look for modules with open source firmware. Purism wanted an isolated Wi-Fi and isolated broadband, so much more complex goal. But the Pine64 did manage to squeeze in the kill switches, though you have to open up the case to reach them. It took me a while to see where the individual, it took me a while to find out where the individual representing Pine64 uh, with the handle at Pine64 has been talking on the internet. And when I discovered all of his comments, I was amazed by his openness about the issues and the challenges. Every step-by-step -step thought was laid out based on his answers to questions of the interested community. So kudos to Mr. Pine64. Perhaps you'll introduce yourself to me here. I wasn't expecting availability in 2019 except to a select few, but apparently they were prepared to ship 3,000 units in this first Braveheart batch for those who are brave. And that's a lot of units for an intro. Well, I'm one of the brave ones. This is not as hard as it looks, as you'll find out, because the design of this phone is like a Raspberry Pi on steroids. In fact, you install an OS and software just like a Raspberry Pi. You just burn an SD card and boot it, and there you go. A lot simpler than using bootloaders and recoveries in Android. There are already disk images available for this, even today, and available for testing though obviously not finalized. Now, if you're not a techie, this, of course, is not going to be so simple because certain modules will likely not work immediately. But there's a lot of good news. The wait for the software will not be long. On the OS front, UB ports, the makers of Ubuntu Touch, are already demonstrating a running model using a PinePhone dev kit, which is mostly identical to the final model. Look at this post by Marius on Twitter. Marius was the original founder of UB Ports. And I don't even think he's 21 yet. I could be wrong. Anyway, it's very good news that it's gotten very far into the testing. And he says it's smooth, so perhaps the CPU is fast enough. Now, I haven't heard what the status of telephony is, making calls and texts, but it sounds like the main functionality is already working. So the Pine64 people are likely going to ship the first batch of the consumer models of this in March with Ubuntu Touch as the main OS for now. Ubuntu Touch seems to be ahead of the pack, at least in Pine64's mind. This probably caused a shock at UB ports because Pine64 is expecting a build run of 50K units of the Pine phone in 2020. This means the expectations are high and the demand is expected to be high. <laughs> but of course, high is relative. Of course, it's nowhere near the couple of billion phones sold each year. This is shocking only because there are probably only a few thousand users of Ubuntu Touch. Can you imagine if suddenly they get tens of thousands of new users all at once? Exciting, but also stressful. I'm sure since there are only a handful of developers contributing to the Ubuntu Touch project. But my guess is that the Ubuntu Touch will be more stable on a Pine phone just because the driver issues would be eliminated. Aside from Ubuntu Touch, there are other distros that are close to being done on the Pine64 development. One that's interesting is Postmarket OS. It can run with a mobile UI called Plasma Mobile from KDE. I checked the Pine phone development on Postmarket OS. And the only thing that's not marked as working is the telephony side. But the notes say it should work. 
and testing was just not done yet maybe they didn't have a sim card and it actually noted that texting worked but it was not updated in the status area so this is probably also close to being ready this linux mobile area is such a complex world people i'm gonna have to make another video about this the world of getting linux to work with devices and chipsets that were originally designed for android the pine phone and librem 5 are unique because these devices are not originally android they're actually made for Linux. So it's expected that device drivers will be provided since the manufacturers want that. In this case, Purism and Pine64. But in the regular Android world, device drivers are all proprietary. So there's no way to create new ones from scratch unless you're the manufacturer of the device. And because of patents and copyrights, they're not gonna tell us how the devices work, especially on an OS that they didn't ship a device with. And in today's phone market, everything is designed to work with Android specifically. That's how the market stands today. In the meantime, we have the Pine Phone and the Librem 5 as the only native Linux devices. These don't need anything else. They don't need something called Halium. You'll find that out later. And the drivers will be intended for Linux. There are three general mobile UIs in active development for Linux, and this will work for a general device like the Pine Phone. These are Ubuntu Touch, Plasma Mobile. The third OS is Pure OS, which is for the Librem 5. The compatibility with a Pine Phone and others are possible in the future. Remember, these are mobile user interfaces, UIs. A mobile UI is touch-based and accounts for smaller screens and, of course, telephony that's not a standard feature in a linux desktop or any desktop they work on top of a standard distro like a linux desktop uses gnome or kde plasma ubuntu touch is limited to ubuntu 16.04 distro while plasma mobile is able to run on top of multiple distros including neon postmarket os and debian I saw a demo of Plasma Mobile in use and it looks very functional, probably closer to Android than Ubuntu Touch. Now the Librem 5 is a completely different animal since Purism is able to provide its own drivers to the Linux world without using any translation layer like a Halium. It's an actual phone designed for Linux and not using Android parts. So Pure OS from Purism is at the moment just intended for a single device, the Librem 5. And it's also been shown, by the way, that Plasma Mobile works also on the Librem 5. I'm guessing that the remaining issues with Plasma Mobile on post-market OS and Ubuntu Touch will be resolved after receiving an actual Pine phone. I'm not expecting to be able to do phone types of things immediately on the Pine 64 if I get it. In December but it will actually allow me to perhaps make some apps and play with it after all it's just Raspberry Pi right like on a phone the pine phone itself isn't that powerful it should run slower at least that's my expectation slower than the Nexus 5 the cameras at the low end at 5 megapixels it only has 2 gigabytes of memory which I guess is more than an entry-level Raspberry Pi but still I'm excited because it's a marker it's the first new Linux phone that I will be able to get my hands on and should be flexible to use for the future. In theory, I should be able to run several distros of Linux on it. Worst case, it'll be a Raspberry Pi-like device. Another OS that's in the works for this is Loon OS. Now, this is made from WebOS from the Palm OS day, so it's not GNU Linux. All of this signifies a starting line in a battle against only two realistic choices for mobile computing in 2019, Apple and Google. Hopefully by 2020, this will cause a change. It's so early, mind you, and that's why it is a bit frustrating. In order for Linux mobile to succeed, apps have to be created, but apps can't get created unless developers have a Linux phone in their hand. In the meantime, we're able to use things like web apps on these OSs. So this is like a new wild, wild west area in software development. Reminds me of the old days when we first developed apps for Windows. Yes, I go back that far. It's hard to create a world without Google and Apple. And this is one of many battles to be fought. So we get some liberty and a way out from being constantly tracked. 
In a way, the battle is between the proprietary devices and software that is completely against the free and open structure of Linux. So it's a difference in philosophy that's translated into a giant Google being able to block all the smaller players, like alternate OSs. In the meantime, while I await the Pine phone and think of possible apps to build on it, I'm still using the Nexus 5 with a bunch of touch. I heard some news from UB ports that some new drivers are coming down the pike from mainline Linux that may solve some of the Bluetooth issues. This battle for a GNU Linux phone is very important for privacy. This is one of the big ways we can remove our Google manacles and have a little bit more freedom and choice. I'll be talking more about this in the future and so you may want to subscribe so you don't miss out. I have my own privacy focused app called Brax.me and you can drop in over there and find me and other people who are interested in privacy. Thanks for watching.